So in this presentation we're going to look at APSIM soils uh, in APSIM Next Generation and my name is Matthew Harrison and I'm a farming system scientist. I work at the University of Tasmania or the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture and this uh, YouTube video follows similar APSIM videos that I've created since 2018. So APSIM Next Generation is the newer version of APSIM if you like. The older version is, was called APSIM Classic. Uh, the newer version was released uh, one or two years ago, so I'm just going to talk about in this file uh, soil uh, and the individual components within soil and what they do. So if we open up an AppSim Next Gen file, go to your start menu, open up the AppSim user interface, so AppSim version 7.8 and 7.10 there are actually older versions of AppSim. Hit AppSim Next Gen. Uh, and it should open up. You'll see a layout that should uh, that essentially looks like this. Uh, and so we have menus across the top, and we have existing AppSim files that we loaded into the past. So we'll in this case we might open up an example. Uh, we might open up uh, AppSim Bali. We just wait for it to load, uh, and up comes the simulation. Here you have this tree on the left hand side, so you have the parent node and then you have sub nodes underneath that. Uh, in the previous AppSim Next Generation video I explained e what each of these components does. In this video I'm just going to talk about the soil and the sub components. So if you right click you'll find a number of different messages and you co can copy the soil type for example into another field or you can delete the soil type, you can uh, check the soil to make sure that all the components are there. Uh, when you hit this little cross at the side it expands, so you've got the physical, you've got soil water, you've got the organic components which are essential, the chemical components which are not essential in general, uh, you've got the initial water, initial N, soil temperature and nutrient. Some, some of these components are essential but not all of them. So if we first look at the physical side of things, uh, now this is what I said before about some being essential but not all of them. So for example, your, your particle size for clay, sand and soil you may have measured for each layer but it's not necessary to put in. Then we have bulk density uh, and these are in grams per cubic centimetre so typical values are shown here. We have water content at air dry, the lower limit at the at a 15 bar, drained upper limit, saturation, hydraulic conductivity, barley lower limit which is the lower limit with which barley can extract. KL, which is the rate with which it moves through the soil, an extraction factor called XF, and then PAWC stands for Plant Available Water Content. Now what we have here is essentially a graph of what we've plotted up here. So if you change one of these values here, you should see it change there. So we might change uh, the lower limit in the top layer. So it's 0.261. Uh, let's just say we change this to 0.2. And you see, <coughs> you see that lower limit then change. Let's just change that back to 0.261. Uh, and essentially what that shows is the soil water bucket. So the plant can extract anything up to drained upper limit. It generally can't extract anything above that point. And then we have the lower limit which is defined by this, uh, this bucket available space here. So which is uh, the intersection of the it's essentially the red curve and the yellow curve. So it can't extract anything less than that. And so the deeper your profile, the deeper the roots can extract soil. So you might say, well, I haven't got 180 centimetres centimetres deep soil. I've only got 150 centimetres. So you can go along here and take out those individual components. Uh, if you take out one component, make sure you take out all of them. Otherwise, Epson will throw an error. We come down here now and we have barley. And this is essentially a, sub, a child node of what we put in here. So all of these values should be the same. Then we have soil water. Now these are all constants within the APSIM soil water module. So the start date for the switch for some of the parameters for soil water evaporation. We have the cumulative soil water evaporation uh, and so on and so forth. So these are, are generally parameters that define essentially an exponential curve for the rate with which evaporation occurs from the soil surface. I wouldn't advise that you modify these unless you know what you're doing. Uh, so in the first case I'd probably suggest that you go with the default values and here we have uh, the different soil layers and so as per default it's gone down to 180 so we'll take out that bottom layer just for the sake of demonstration. We have the thicknesses, we have another parameter called soil water conductivity or soil water con and then K lat which is 
lateral flow within the soil. So you can so those values are not essential, but you can put in values if you have them. And again, you can pull this up here and have a look at the graph. So that should be the same as what you put in before. Then you have organic matter. Now that's very important. So if you're in in particular, if you're looking at nitrogen uh, or changes in soil carbon, these values are particularly important. So let's just take out those because we were looking at an example. Uh, and now we have. Uh, we have fresh organic matter in this column and generally you have an ex a reverse exponential relationship, an inverse, so you have higher values of fresh organic matter in the surface and lower as you go down. This value here is the inert fraction of soil carbon and that ranges between 0 and 1. This is the fresh fraction of biomass between 0 and 1. This is the soil uh, carbon to nitrogen ratio in grams per gram and this is the total organic carbon. If you have a really high carbon soil, it might be 5 to 7%. Really low might be you know, down to 0.1 or 2%. And generally, the higher you are to the surface, the higher the, the soil organic carbon. And you can change those values and see how uh, nitrogen, for example, and mineralization might change with this soil. Then we come down to chemical, and this is essentially stipulating the initial nitrate, the initial ammonium, the initial pH in the profile. You don't need to enter Cl or Ec, for example, but you can if you want, but they're not used in the simulation. So these values have a big impact on the initial value of the simulation. We then put in initial water. You can specify the maximum available water, or you can specify the depth with which the soil uh, is wet. So we might say, well, it's only 50 centimetres wet, and so therefore you can see the bucket changes. Or you can say, I'm specifying a, prax a fraction of a ma maximum available water. Uh, it's only really, in my case, it might be only be 10% full. Uh, and it's not evenly distributed, it's actually filled from the top, and so you can see that that's much less. And then you might say, well, it's not relative to lower limit, it's in la relative to barley soil, for example. Uh, then you have your initial N, you can put in these values, you can choose to put them in or not. You have uh, a control node for soil temperature, you can't do anything there. And then you have the nutrient budget. Now this essentially shows the concept diagram of the flows between uh, components and this accounts for the organic matter and the nitrogen that you put in before. So you can move these around uh, and you can see how it relates to other factors. If, for example, you want to look at the individual parameters in a soil, you can get, you can right click and then you can go show model structure uh, and up comes this little cross here. And then you can hit that and it'll show each of the individual components. And so for, nutri for the nutrient budget, it's showing the inert fraction, the surface residue, the urea, the nitrate, the fresh organic matter for lignin, cellulose and carbohydrate, the microbial biomass, the humic biomass, the, uh, the ammonium, uh, and various other parameters. And it's useful if you click on these, the little symbol there, and this is the useful thing about Axiom Next Generation, is that it doesn't use a hidden file. The individual parameters are actually in the interface. And for example, these Cs here mean that a constant is used for nitrogen loss and so on and so forth. And it's usually quite intuitive. So it's saying we're using a function for, so for humic, uh, humic biomass, we're using a function for initial carbon, and you can see that as a function. You can also go in there and see the descriptions that have been put in there by the Axiom developers, so I think that's quite useful. We also have uh, soil organic matter, uh, which is not part of the soil uh, submodule, but is very uh, important for determining changes in soil carbon and soil nitrogen over the duration of simulation. So you can indicate what type of residue you have, the mass of residue, the standing fraction, for example, and then you have other components. That's all I wanted to uh, talk about in this presentation.